Hey, what's up, Leron here. One of the things I want to show you more of is how I like to get out of the way of watercolor and let it do its thing. Um, and one of the ramifications of this is that the first wash actually isn't that important. And that, that's what I'm going to show you uh, today. It's something I've shown you before. Uh, this is the sketch. I will include a link to a higher quality picture you can use. Uh, but let's see this in action. So I am going to grab a bit of my yellow here on my leftovers on the palette. Uh, and I'm just going to let the, the paint kind of play. Okay. Um, not too worried about uh, the color being saturated or anything like that. Uh, but I want to show you Okay, uh, the way um, by using very wet paint and really letting it move all around, you can get quite a nice uh, initial wash that really plays into uh, watercolors, uh, I would say, strengths. Okay, now as I dig a little more into that yellow, I'm going to start charging with cleaner paint. Um, and I'm gonna ignore the background, it's gonna be darker anyway, but especially in the context of these apples below, you're gonna see this lovely effect. Now, uh, let's add to that cleaner yellow a bit of red, just to orange the atmosphere a bit. And I don't know why I'm huffing and puffing. <laughs> Didn't do any, any sports or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, look at this edge, right? It's pretty wet. Uh, that will allow me to um, get a lot done here. Now let's leave just the highlight, which is going to be somewhere around here. Now I can always grab a second brush and use that to manipulate some of the edges. So if I want a soft edge somewhere, I'll just go ahead and lift a bit of that. Um, sometimes you have to be a little careful so that the, the, ed, the, the shape itself doesn't get filled with paint. And we're off to the races, we'll continue here. Uh, but as soon as we get to the apples below, that's the, where the magic is gonna happen. Now, one thing that I've been, again, loving to do is get out of the, of, of the paint's way and let it do its thing. Um, the more I can almost play with it in harmony, uh, the better the result tends to be. Let's cover that highlight, we don't need it. Uh, the better the result tends to be and uh, the paint feels more alive and, and, and this especially is the strength that you can, can get in the first wash uh, is one of the strong, uh, that's one of the strong points of that first wash. Now I'm going to get a bit of quinacridone and a bit of um, Pearl Scarlet. And look at what I'm going to do here. So the way I'm going to approach this is just like an underpainting. And uh, thankfully, the apples are arranged in a way that really just encourages me to almost go a little crazy here. Uh, and we're going to let, uh, and it will vary it up a little. We're mostly going to let the paint kind of do its thing. We're going really, this is as rough as it can get. And now I'm going to go back to my yellow and a bit of, I have a bit of green here. So why not make use of that? And I'm just going to start painting in the green apples. And we're going to let these shapes merge and communicate together. A bit of green, just a tiny bit, bit of green. Uh, while uh, ideally maintaining the quote-unquote independence of the shapes. Um, so if you, if you allow a bit of time between when you put one shape and another, they will tend to maintain their kind of, okay, this is red, this is yellow, this is green, as you can see here. And for everything that goes on around here, I can just go ahead, grab just a bit of yellow um, for that uh, straw basket thing. Uh, actually, I will do really well to just use clean water. It's super bright anyway. Um, now, what I like to do in these instances, let's just mute it down just a tad bit here. Uh, what I like to do in these instances is uh, to look at what's going on on paper. Um, because that's going to dictate the way we're going to move forward. Uh, do I have any edges I'd like to take advantage of? Do I have anything I'd like to blend or, you know, change, modify, uh, whatever. Uh, and can I take advantage of this here? I don't see too much because we're already kind of merging everything together. 
So I'm gonna let this probably dry. Uh, one last kind of move I can do is if I really want to uh, go back and get some uh, lights, I can just come back with some water actually and just drop it in, as you can see here, and it will almost automatically lift uh, a highlight like so. For some of these, uh, if you care to have these highlights, you can see a bit of that here. You can come back with a dry brush too if you want to lift. Uh, I find that it's sometimes easier to come back with a bit of water actually. And then with a dry brush. So we're kind of establishing things here. Um, if you want to lift back something from previously that you kind of botched, as I have here, a bit of this one. Um, and that's pretty much it. We're going to let this dry and you're going to see how insignificant in the grand scheme of things the first wash was because everything is going to get established in the next one. Okay now this is mostly dry and I think this is a great process for anyone who uh, finds themselves a little nervous um, about a lot of details and how to express them and you know you see everything and you wonder how to approach it. Um, look at how easy going this first wash is. Now what I'm going to show you is how the next stage uh, is going to start defining the shapes that we see. So I'm gonna make a bit of an orange and I'm going to add a bit of blue from what I have leftovers here on the palette. And let's take a look at this, see that it kind of matches, could be a little stronger. Let's just add a bit of everything here. But I do want the undercurrent to be kind of orangey brown. So, mainly a bit more yellow and red, that'll be. A bit more yellow. And look at what I'm gonna do with this mix that we have here. Uh, I'll show you how, this is something you've probably seen before, and I'm gonna keep things quite high key here. Uh, I'm gonna show you how this defines the shapes of the apples. Uh, so we'll get started with this little corner here. And you know, it's funny, I don't even have to finish the painting in order to get a point across, but we'll see how far we'll take it. I wanna show you how this helps render the shapes of the apples. Uh, we may find that some uh, apples are too light. We'll have to go back over all of them, by the way, that can happen, of course. Uh, but if we look at this kind of a straw thing here, uh, I may have to get real close. Uh, so sorry if uh, I'm gonna be obstructing maybe some of the view here. Uh, but, and look at how flowy this wash is. Like hopefully you can tell if I hold it up. Um, I don't know what the angle I should hold it up is, but this is really flowy paint, okay? Um, and it's what what's going to define the shapes of our apples because it is such a flowing paint. Uh, we actually have quite a lot of time. Uh, and I can also uh, use this opportunity to connect it with the straw basket and start hinting at some texture, right? Um, something like this. Um, I'm not too worried actually about the environment here, everything around this. I don't really care about it as much. I just want to show you how uh, we define the shapes, uh, usually in the second wash. So something like this, and here we're starting to dip into the shadow on the apple. You could just put that in. So for example, I'm gonna just mix uh, a bit of green into this uh, and just put the shadow Right now, you don't have to make any separation. See, this is the shadow on the apple here. It's a bit subtle, uh, but it kind of cuts in like that. You can do the exact same thing with the other apple. You don't have to. Um, and we'll, we're gonna probably darken some of these. But if you want to, look at what we can do here. We're gonna pre-wet so that we have a smooth transition. And then we're just gonna feed this area with the paint and let it freely merge with the background, right? Uh, I'm not really too careful about having my colors match. I'm using whatever version I have of every color. And this is something I frequently uh, enjoy doing. So I'll use my green or my whatever, you know, whatever paint I have, my red, my uh, yellow and so on. Uh, you can actually use this uh, other small damp brush uh, to help some of it merge if you want it to move more, but what we've done essentially is unite the light and shadows. Uh, this can help us with uh, creating an impression. Uh, and we can continue while we have this paint here, we can use a bit of a smaller brush this time and start indicating the rest of the basket. So 
One advantage is when or while you already have the same paint, uh, you can use it uh, in multiple places just to save, you know, some uh, some time and efficiency in the process. And if you want to, once again, combine it with uh, the object um, or the object's shadow, you can um, just extend it. So I'm going to be pre-wetting because this uh, I want a smooth transition once again. And then I'll get some, I think, just clean, clean quinacridone. And I'll just start feeding it and touching that edge. Now, we're not committing. This isn't a final wash at all. We're just merging this shadow with the apple and look at how just by adding this little bit here you can already tell uh, the shape and that it might be an apple right because apples tend to look this way with that uh, little uh, dip in the middle uh, same goes for this other part here we can merge this with the shadow here and even touch where it started to dry just to reawaken it a bit I did not pre-wet so I can do that now doesn't really matter there we go and we will get a smoother transition right around here. Now, look at what happens. The, the shapes of the apples uh, begin to come to life uh, the more we do this. And I might at some point kind of push this into time lapse just to get uh, a few more of these done uh, because it's a bit of a repetitive process, albeit fun. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll choose on it as we go along. Look, I can connect this shape to this shape. Right? And what's fun is you're thinking, okay, but the apple itself needs to be a little darker and stronger. No problem. That's something we can very easily do in a second, actually. Now, look at this beautiful cast shadow. It's a little warm because of the red apple next to the green apple. So we're going to start warm here along the edge. And then we'll switch back to our cooler color. And I did not pre wet here as well. So let's just wet the edge and hope it moves enough. Again, I prefer pre-wetting if possible. It just makes it easier to blend, but sometimes you just forget or it doesn't really match what you have on paper and you end up not doing it. Remember, um, every painting has its own um, its own path, its own process. Uh, nothing is uh, predetermined really, and a lot of it is about feeling what's going on on paper and going with the flow uh, and going with the flow of watercolor, you know, that's that's the way we move out of the way and let the Color do its thing same goes for here. Maybe let's mix it up with a little bit of pyrrole scarlet um, A bit of a, a harder to wield paint, right? Uh, sometimes you're really unsure of what it's gonna dry like um, I like to mix it with a bit of Cronacridon Rose uh, to kind of let the two uh, create an average where the end result is hopefully it's something that makes sense um, and That's how I'm gonna render Everything here. I'm gonna repeat the same process and you'll notice how slowly but surely uh, The apples begin to emerge um, I may end up going over and darkening everything you see here, you know, even the shadows that could very well happen uh, but for now this is how I'm painting it. Uh, I like to have a tissue handy so that I can dab some paint faster than the, the tissue I have next to my palette right here off camera. Uh, I find that it helps me. Uh, now let's try just for fun. Uh, let's um, do an, a wash that goes over the rest of the apple just to see if we can push it uh, more in the direction of let's say a final kind of color so this is gonna all be uh, yellow and I'm actually gonna leave this little gap here for a highlight when we can of course paint the highlights later on I can also use this opportunity to uh, get some and you notice I just pick up whatever leftovers I have here I can use this to get some smooth transitions here some of the shadows here as well and if we end up having to go over some parts that's fine we're building it up uh, from the grounds up That's a big part of it for me now look at what what happens with the straw basket. We can already just uh, merge the shadows of the straw basket with uh, The edges here so something that you know you pay attention you see what's going on on paper I don't mind it blending a bit with the apples. I find that to be charming and look nice uh, So we're just gonna go ahead and do that 
just like that and maybe close that gap here and we got ourselves a bit of that straw basket now here's an example for where I would make use of the fact that an edge is still wet so I'm gonna mix something fairly neutral here and I'm going to a little cool though I'm going to use this still moist edge to close it up uh, so that I get a smooth transition can you see that hopefully you can and look at how just with that a bit of a feel of light and shadow was created now let's add a bit of carbazol violet to that a bit of phthalo blue to that a bit of quinacridone rose a bit of black a bit of everything and let's just get a few of these darker little deets little details same goes here while it's still wet you can start including more details and to me I prioritize very often uh, my feel over you know accuracy and and exactness if that's a word uh, for the sole reason that I've done the hyper realistic I've done the hyper detailed and if I'm being honest with myself I enjoy this type of work much much more um, so now let's do something fun we have this apple here the red apple doesn't really touch anything let's see if we can just go ahead and render that apple uh, individually just on its own uh, so we're gonna get started with a bit of a warm-ish yellow here and then switch over add a bit more of the quinacridone like so I am going to preserve this beautiful highlight I'm gonna leave a gap a bit of a gap here and look at what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use that gap to kind of smoothen out the transition like so keep it more interesting and I can go in a very direct approach over to the shadows here on the right again you decide you know whatever strikes you as a fun process or a process you feel comfortable with um, feel free to do that and just start rendering them and I've been painting quite a lot of apples lately it seems now towards the bottom we have some reflected light that makes this shadow lighter so we can actually go ahead include that in and while this is still wet we can continue working so let's soften this edge up and then we look at it we're trying to figure out okay now is it uh, dark enough light enough uh, are there areas where we've gone a little overboard maybe we want to fix some stuff um, I would say this needs to be darker and I'm still using quite high key beautiful light colors um, I would say this should also be stronger a little more towards the bottom I will say that this should have a smoother transition right around here so let's try and soften it up with a bit of a moist brush right as long as it's still wet you can do quite a lot with it and then we can start maybe adding a bit of neutral tint just to push it a touch to be darker and see if we can render some of the really pitch black or dark details within the details something like that uh, and of course you have this beautiful cast shadow right to the right here uh, that maybe we can get like so um, and that looks like a nice little apple of course colors could be uh, better everything could always be improved uh, but I think that's a really nice way of wrapping it up now look at I mean not the entire process we're gonna continue but uh, a bit more at least uh, but wrapping up this apple in particular I want to show you something fun here so I can move on and while this is still a little moist maybe pre wet first this time this area right here and Gonna go back and grab some of this green and let it almost touch and you have to be a little mindful here just the edge in some spots while being a little careful see now in reality it's darker so we can actually go ahead and indicate that the bottom of this apple is darker than the red apple um, something to do a little carefully here uh, and you see you start to build up around this apple uh, now some of my colors have uh, 
blended quite a bit. I like it that way. If you prefer a more separate look, you could just work on the apples individually in the very first wash I've shown you, remember. Now let's just for fun switch it over to um, one of these. Um, I don't know what that is. I, 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 I mean, it's not pears. I don't think it's pears. Maybe it is. Um, but let's see what we can do. So, uh, let's work on this central one. I'm gonna start just wet here. Bit of clean, somewhat clean yellow. And then it starts to go a little darker towards the right. And I'm actually starting to recognize a bit of an orange brown tint to it. So I can just grab this red here and just get started on the shadowy, kind of dirtier side. And I actually recognize a bit of redness from reflected light. So let's, let's grab a bit of pyrrol and I'm going to feed the edge with that pyrrol scarlet. Maybe we'll be able to create a bit of an impression of warmth there. Before, um, and even here I see a bit of that. It's very gentle, but remember, we're the artists. We can decide to take advantage of these effects and exaggerate them, right? Uh, so, and then let's add a bit of that blue here. Now let's see if I can, I'll need the paint to be a little stronger. I may mess this up. This is a bit of a gentler kind of control required. Uh, and I'm actually not that in the mood for doing super gentle control right now. Again, I told you I've done plenty of uh, very uh, accurate, deliberate, careful work lately, and I really feel like just going a little freer here. But this here, right here, that's nice. And we'll make sure to leave this orange here. I'm gonna keep a bit of a damp brush around this line just to help these blend together. So, I'm gonna get the stem just a little stronger, and it does cast a shadow. We can add that later on when things dry. I don't want it to blend too much, but this is pretty much it. So, so, and I can just continue that way. So I can. Do so you see? There's a sliver of an orangey kind of sh shadow there that I can merge with the dark background, and then I can either soften or just go over with a. Um, very light pale yellow like so just to help it move a bit and as I get to the middle start uh, warming it up a bit like this you have a lot of artistic freedom in the in the colors and how you render things you know uh, and then I actually see it going a little light and neutral so let's go ahead and give it a try see what happens light and neutral so you get something like this here and then if we go back to our yellow, that's probably one of my favorite ways to paint. Um, just placing the paint there, whatever almost feels correct to me. And, and you know, my intuition isn't perfect at all. You see, it's fraught with mistakes and inaccuracies. Uh, but I feel like something better comes out of it when I use that. Um, something I enjoy much more. Uh, then, you know, really adhering to the colors I'm seeing. So what I'm gonna do is push a bit of that in time-lapse and then we'll do some final uh, talking because there's a lot going on here. It's very repetitive. I'm just gonna push things a few steps further. So a quick uh, break from the time uh, lapse. I just want to show you uh, the power of simply glazing. So we have this, for example, this apple here, and I'm gonna grab my bit of a yellow green, and all I'm doing is going over what's already there, leaving out just the highlights, right? I'm not gonna touch where the highlights should be, and a lot of people have this phobia from painting over darker paint. You don't have to worry about that. It actually works really well. And then I'm gonna come back with, some, with just a damp brush and soften this little highlight here. Maybe close that bit of gap here. And you see how just by 
glazing over it with another layer you can push it to be just a little uh, nicer more saturated in simpler terms uh, feel free to first put the shadows and then fill in the mid values uh, that's something that even I have avoided a lot in the past there's actually nothing wrong with that and it can work out really really well so I just wanted to uh, direct your attention to that and we're gonna continue here and uh, just finish this off real fast I don't think I'll fill in everything I'm gonna leave this one a little vague Yeah, so we're done here. Uh, I really like the end result. I'm gonna sign this and uh, put up on the screen, you know, a scanned version so you can see the colors a little better. Went very crazy there on the end, you saw. Very loose because, you know what? I care more about prioritizing my vision and the final feel I want. And I love how vague these details are. I love how this transition is just smooth, which by the way, I can make it a little smoother if I just go over it like this. Uh, uh, free up that little line that was created there but overall that's what the process is all about i really want to thank you for watching i really do appreciate it don't forget to leave a like let me know how, what you think about this one in a comment below i do want to thank everyone who supports me over on patreon if you want to uh, be a part of what i do you can feel free to check that out and you'll get credits at the end of my videos and if you want to learn this specific painting approach check out the frustration free watercolor course link below. We'll talk to you again real soon. Until next time, take care.